Welcome to the channel. In this video, we will look at the most expensive, but the prettiest block plane on the market. Stick with me. All right, so I have to start with a shout out to my buddy Lou. He is the one that let me borrow this plane and I, I've said it again, but I'm completely geeking out over this thing. I've always wanted to try one because it's $375 and I wanted to know why, and now I know. So let's go ahead and dive into the stats here. Lengthwise, it's six and three eighths ish. It's just a little bit shorter than that. Two inches wide and the iron is one and five eighths. Now weight wise, <laughs> two pounds, 3.1 ounces. Two pounds, 3.1 ounces or 994 grams. To give you a little bit of a comparison, the normal Veritas block plane, not their NX or their DX, is similar to these dimensions and it weighs one pound 13 ounces. So this is the heaviest block plane that I've ever held, but the body is made out of solid bronze. And the the cap is also bronze and walnut. So it's just a very beefy plane and it's heavy. <laughs> Let's keep going on with the stats. So it has a cryogenic O1 iron. It has a Norris style adjuster that includes the lateral movement, which I like. Um, I think all of the companies, except for the ones that copy the Stanleys, they don't have lateral adjustment on theirs. This one does. The lateral works really well. Now with this plane, you don't have to tighten the cap super hard because it's a Norris style adjuster. So you're not really going to get any kind of backlash. If you crank down on that cap, you won't be able to adjust lateral or depth. So, don't tighten it down super far. Um, when I tightened it down really far and I tried to adjust the lateral, I had to use a hammer. When I tried to use my hands, it was almost like it was skipping across that blade. The little nib that is on the back of that adjuster just skirted across the blade. It, it wasn't smooth or anything like that. And then when it came to dot depth, it, I felt like I was going to break it. But you don't need to clamp it all the way down. That was my error and that's how I learned, oh, I'm making a mistake. I don't need to have this that tight. As far as the cryogenic O1 steel, um, I'm not a big fan of O1 for hand planes. For block planes and chisels, I'm okay with it. Now this is normal O1. I haven't tested the cryogenic too much. So far what I've learned is it just holds an edge a little bit longer than the O1 steel. But when it comes to chisels in O1 and specialty like jointry planes in O1, I like it because I would rather it fold that blade versus tearing out my workpiece. I haven't tested this one enough to see if it does the same thing as regular O1 or not, but for this block plane, I'm okay with the cryogenic O1. If you guys have used that steel before and you have opinions, let us know down below. Now the machining on this plane is amazing. Um, it's probably the best machining I've ever seen. I mean, it's got chamfers all the way around it and really pretty looking chamfers too. Not like they just eased the corner, like they machined in those chamfers. They went as far as putting a little recess in the cap for the screw to sit into. I mean, they did a perfect job, in my opinion, on the machining of this plane. Performance wise, <laughs> amazing shavings. I didn't care if I had it set heavy or if I had it set light, it was taking beautiful shavings every time. Um, I got tear out sometimes, but that's only because of the wood I was using. I was using some white oak, and if you guys know white oak, it's temperamental. I'm just going to put it that way. <laughs> but it performed phenomenally. Um, in certain operations, the weight helped you. In other operations, like for example, cutting a chamfer on the side of a board, the weight, in my personal opinion, counted against me because it was more reliant on my hand pressure to hold that plane in place. If you're planing just flat on a normal surface, it does help because the plane is smaller, it's not like a, a normal bench plane size. But <laughs> um, it's too heavy for me. And with those plane dimensions and it being such a wide plane and a long plane, it ended up hurting my hands. So my personal opinion on this plane is I wouldn't, even if money wasn't an issue, because this plane I forgot to mention is $375. Even if money wasn't an issue for me, I personally would not buy this block plane because of my hand size. If you've got big mitts, this thing's not going to be an issue for you. If you have small hands, it's going to cause an issue for you. Um, and what I found that my preference is the like 60 and a half Lee Nielsen size or the NX, excuse me, I can't afford the NX, or the DX for the Veritas line. 
If you're curious on some additional measurements, I did measure how tall the cap is to the base of the plane if you wanted to see because the issue is when it goes so high into your hand, your fingers have to extend longer to grab the body of the plane and that ended up hurting me right in here and then it ended up hurting down here as well, but you guys know me. Um, so from the bottom of the plane to the top of the cap, when it's locked down, it's two and three eighths. So that kind of gives you an idea of how long you have if you want to measure your fingers that way. And then width wise, you can measure across your knuckles. So mine is three and an eighth. If you wanted to know in case your hands are similar to mine, you kind of have an idea of what you're getting into with this plane. The cap alone, that walnut piece um, without the adjuster is an inch. So when you add all of that together, that's when you get to the two and three eighths of how tall that is off the top of the plane, if that makes sense. It does have the adjustable mouth, um, which operates really well. And I found it pretty useful because you could get that mouth really close to the edge of the iron. Now it's not like the Veritas that have a stop. So just make sure that you're not gonna smack that mouth into your iron because that's not, that's never a good thing, especially with O1, but we're not getting into that. So to wrap it all up, the plane is the heaviest and the most expensive plane that I've ever seen or heard of. Um, I'm not talking about infills. If you guys want to get into infill planes, you can do that in the comments. But out of just normal, modern maker, block planes, it is $375. It's over two pounds. It works amazing. It works phenomenal. You will have no issues with it. They went above and beyond with the machining. It's just a great plane. And I think this is like the only time in my life that I've ever wished my hands were bigger. Because if my hands were bigger, I'd be all over that plane and I'd be saving up my pennies to buy it in a heartbeat. <laughs> but all right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, any comments, anything like that, feel free to let us know down below. Lou, I appreciate you. I've got, I think, one or two more videos to do with all the planes that you sent me. So just... Thank you so much. This has been a geek out moment, nerd out moment. All right, adios. See you guys at Handworks. Have a good one. <laughs>